Hey, single plane fans and Mo Norman fans out there. I have been extremely busy traveling around the world, working on the Mo Norman documentary. That's been one of the projects that I've uh, been working on. I've been to Palm Springs, LA. Now I'm down here in Orlando, and I'm excited to be back in front of you so we can talk more about the golf swing. And one of the things that I want to do today is discuss with you why we teach the way we teach. Now, if you've noticed, if you're a Golf Digest subscriber, we got ranked the number one golf instruction organization in Oklahoma. So thank you, Golf Digest. It's, a, it's an honor to be ranked as the number one golf instruction company in the state of Oklahoma. So that's great. Uh, we're excited about that. So we're excited about going into 2020. And I thought, since I haven't spent a lot of time on the channel with you, that we would discuss kind of a preview and an overview of why we teach the way we teach in what I call the matchups of the single plane swing. So let's go discuss the mechanics of the single plane swing and how certain things during the swing match up. Now, what do I mean by matchups? We're going to talk today about the single plane golf swing in the sense of you can't just take little bits and pieces of it. A lot of you out there ask me questions about, well, is this the proper grip? When people say, is this the proper grip? They might walk up to me and say, they put their hands on the club and go, is this the proper way to hold the club? And I'm like, I don't know. Here's why. Because your hands are just a part of your address tilt and arm rotation. So the hand position affects arm rotation and body tilt. So there's things that match up in the mechanics of the golf swing. If you look at my channel, and by the way, some of you that ask questions, thank you very much for asking the questions. I'm trying to answer as many as I can and give you the proper answers. Sometimes it's hard to with just words, but if you're, if you're interested, subscribe to my channel and go back through some of the videos because I discuss a lot of these concepts sometimes in more detail than I'll be able to do today. So don't forget to check out some of the other videos on this channel. But also, when things match up, let's just take the lead arm, lead hand position. Let's just talk lead hand today, okay? Why is it so important? So first of all, the lead hand position is the club face. So how this hand and arm are oriented determines how the club achieves impact. Many of you have asked the question of how do you square the club face? To me, and I use this term a little bit lightly here, the club squares naturally through the proper positions of the body. So in other words, if I have the hand on the club correctly and I have my body tilted and my body in the correct position and impact, notice how the club is square. All right? So that, that requires me to have all these positions of my body correct to get a club that's square. Now when I swing the club, I'm not trying to square the club face. I'm just moving my body into those positions and the club naturally squares up at the bottom. So I'm not trying to square the face, I'm not rotating the hands, I'm not doing anything, let's say, conscious to make the face square. The position that I grip the club in, the position I put my body in, and the position I achieve an impact square the club face. So don't be trying, I don't want anybody to manipulate. I'm not a big fan of manipulation where you have to try to manipulate club, because look, the club's going too fast, you're swinging too fast, nobody can think through the timing of a golf swing, it's going too fast. So you gotta learn to position yourself in a way that through movement, the club naturally squares. So I'm gonna just talk lead hand here. So take a look at what I'm doing when I set up. Lead hand position, lead arm alignment is a function of not only where I hold the club in the hand, but also how I tilt the body and orient the position of my body. So I'm gonna forget about the trail hand for a second and let's just go into the lead hand position. So I need to properly tilt the body, right? So it's about um, almost 20 degrees of tilt away from the target. So there's that tilt. And then my arm is extended. Now I'm gonna do something really interesting and I want you to experiment with this. You know I talk a lot about the stability of the body, right? How the body stabilizes. I want you to do something for me. This is really good stuff to do so you can learn a little bit of how your body works. But take your arm, so tilt your body first, okay? Take your arm and from this tilted, notice how my shoulder is higher, I want you to grab your bicep, so just hold it still, don't let it move, okay? And turn your hand. And you'll notice 
that if you keep the shoulder position and this arm positioned, that you can see how that arm, the rotation of the forearm only can go so far. So if this shoulder and this arm are in the proper position, this arm can only go to so much of a rotation. I can't go any more than that. See that? So what you've done is you've created a full range of motion of this arm by the position of this arm and the shoulder. Does that make sense? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is when I swing a golf club from the proper grip position and arm position and I swing the club, the rotation of the torso does exactly that. See, it does exactly that. It puts this arm into this position, so when this club comes down, it squares. It can't do anything but that. Does that make sense? So what's happening here is you're getting a lead arm position that as it comes down, this stabilizes. We talk a lot about that. This stabilizes. See how my body is totally supported here and stable. All of a sudden, this arm, this shoulder gets rotated, but it gets, it gets, it gets kind of stuck. I mean, stuck in the sense that it can't go anywhere, and then this has to square up. So there's the sequence of events of this arm. Now, I'm telling you this because this doesn't start here. It starts here. Stabilization, stabilization, rotation, stabilization, squaring up. See that? And then you get, what you get out of this whole motion here is you get this arm stopping so that it can, this, the, the rest of this can, this can rotate correctly. See, if this arm stops, this rotates correctly and squares the club face, and then you release the club through. You see how the club is squaring because of the positioning of this and this and this. That's why when I see people straighten or they don't rotate enough, see when they don't rotate enough, this thing's stopping too soon, this has to go like that. Let me, let me kind of swing one easy here and let's go through it and you're going to see what happens. It's, it's going too fast to see it on video, but, but watch, I'll swing nice and, nice and easy here. What's happening in that motion is you're seeing this. You're seeing the club come down, stable, stable. Okay, so here I, my torso gets rotated, stable, square, release. That stabilization right here in this part of my arm allows this to occur. And that's what squares the face from the proper lead hand position, from the proper arm orientation and tilt. See, tilt means a lot to that. That's why it matches up. This tilt's matching arm position. And then proper rotation squares the face, and then you just extend the arm. Position of the body is critical to that. Do you notice that? So you notice how the tilt of the body, the position of the hand and the arm, and the position of the rotation all are very important to the squaring of that face at impact. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today is experiment with your tilt. Experiment. Hold your arm position still. Rotate the arm. There's your lead hand position. See that? It's creating a full range of motion in the arm rotation. Then you bring your trail hand in, and there's your arm position. So if you're wondering about the lead hand, I don't like people doing it like this. Like, how do you grip the club? I like them doing it like this. See that? So it's orienting the hand into its full range of motion. That's today's lesson. Thanks for joining me. If you want to find out more information about the single plane swing, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.